Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody, for watching over the TV and broadcast. Good morning, people. DLCC. DLCC name. DLCC name. Good morning, DLCC family. I hope you are all watching today. Because today is the day that we do that. We'll go here in the means and actually experience it.
your name alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Almighty God and Father. Amen and amen. Hello. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Kamusta po kayo mga kapatid sa umaga pong ito? Ako po ay uh, bumabati po ng magandang umaga sa bawat isa. Uh, sa lahat po ng mga nakasubaybay sa atin pong live broadcast sa umaga pong ito, I am praying that our God may uh, bless us uh, today, that we may receive a full abundance of grace sa atin pong Panginoon. sa araw po na ito. Naunawaan ko po na ang atin pong kalagayan sa pagkakataon po na ito ay uh, maaaring uh, hindi po sumasapat sa atin pong pangailangan. Ngunit sa kabila po nit noon ay dapat po tayong magpasalamat po sa atin pong Panginoon dahil meron pong live broadcast. Amen po ba? Amen. Sige po, uh, purihin po ang Panginoon ay Ako po ay napagpala sa atin pong pagsamba sa umagang ito, nawa ay ganun din po kayo. Bago po ako magbahagi ng salita po ng Diyos, allow me brethren to share first our trust at, at this moment, which is to pray for our nation, for our fight against COVID-19. And of course, it's always our prayer concern um, to... Pray for our uh, church ministries, our young people, our kids, every family of deeper life, and all the workers of our ministries. And just to give you an update uh, about a concerning matter in our COVID cases um, recently or just as of yesterday. So we can see that Our new cases is continually increasing day by day. So last week, March 19, we just recorded 7,000 new cases in one day. But after one week on March 26, it's surprising and it's, it's alarming, mga kapatid, because we recorded the highest new cases of 9,800. And that's a big jump from uh, 7,000 to uh, 9,800. And uh, we have res registered a record, record high of 118,000 cases active COVID, uh, positive in, in COVID as of yesterday. So that's our uh, uh, urgent concern Ngayon, mga kapatid, as, as a Christian, bilang isa pong palataya ay uh, dapat po nating ipanalangin ang atin pong kalagayan. Alam po natin na ang Diyos ay meron pong programa sa kanya pong iglesia at sa mga panahon po na ito. Subalit, ang atin pong pagpapanalangin ay dapat po nating iukol para po sa katuparan ng Uh, mga plano po ng Diyos sa pamamagitan po ng bawat isa po sa atin. At alam po natin na ang layunin po ng Panginoon ay maranasan ng bawat uh, bawat inibig po ng Panginoon 
na sila ay maligtas, na sa panahon po na ito ay maranasan po nila ang pagliligtas ng ating pong Panginoong Kristo at sila ay magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. So, before uh, I share the word, mga kapatid, can I just invite you for a prayer? Wherever you are, uh, if you are watching right now in our FB Live broadcast, and if you are DLCC members, whoever you are, whatever you do right now, I am inviting you to stand up in prayer. In the book of Acts, the believers, when they pray to God, they stand up as a mark of their, uh, of their intensified need from God and their seriousness in prayer. So let's stand up and let's pray for our nation, for our government leaders, for our COVID cases, that our Lord may have mercy on every Filipino and may fulfill His purpose of reaching them out and saving their lives. Yes, Father God, we honor you, we praise you, God. Kami po ay nagpapasako po sa inyo, aming Panginoon, sa inyo pong dakilang kalooban because you are indeed sovereign Lord, aming Panginoon. At alam po namin, Panginoon, ang inyo pong ang mga planuhin, aming Panginoon, ang inyo pong programa, Panginoon, sa panahon po na to, ay wala pong makakapigil, aming Panginoon, ang amin pong mga buhay, ang amin pong mga sarili, can be locked down, Panginoon, but, oh God, your purpose, Lord, cannot be locked down, aming Panginoon. And, uh, I, and we pray for it, oh God na maranasan po ng bawat isa ang inyo pong pagliligtas aming Panginoon sa panahon po na to. O Lord, we pray O God that you may uh, you may uh, have mercy Panginoon sa bawat uh, mga kababayan po namin Panginoon na ngayon ay hindi pa po nakakilala po sa inyo sila aming Diyos na inyo pong inibig at iniligtas aming Panginoon. O God, let them O God Hear your gospel, Panginoon, and for them to be saved, aming Panginoon. Fulfill your, your saving work, Panginoon, your saving plan, aming Panginoon, sa mga tao po na ito, na sa panahon po na ito, aming Diyos ay maaaring sila ay meron pong pagkabagabag at lubos po na pagkatakot, aming Panginoon. And for the benefit, Lord, of all uh, nation, Panginoon, of our nation, aming Diyos, we pray, Panginoon, that you may uh, help us, Panginoon, in, in managing, Lord, the uh, difficulties, Panginoon, na amin pong nararanasan sa panahon po na to, especially, Panginoon, in uh, fulfilling, Panginoon, and uh, 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 getting, Panginoon, uh, medications, Panginoon, sa lahat po ng mga... Uh, COVID positive aming Panginoon. Help our leaders, O God, our nation, Panginoon, our uh, president, our congressmen, our senators, and every government officials, Panginoon. We pray, Lord, that you may use them, Panginoon, as your uh, instrument, Panginoon, to uh, reach out, O God, those who are in need of medications and of vaccines aming Panginoon. We pray, Panginoon, that every Pilipino, Panginoon, may be blessed, Panginoon, by your grace, O God, and by your mercy, Panginoon. Makita po namin ang inyo pong mga kamay na umaabot, Panginoon, sa buhay po ng bawat isa. At sa lahat po ng ito, aming Panginoon, ay maluwalhati po kayo. Makita po, Panginoon, ng sambayan ng Pilipino, ang Diyos po na nagliligtas, Panginoon, at ang Diyos na umaabot sa kanila pong mga buhay. Maraming marami pong salamat, Panginoon. As a nation, Panginoon, kami po ay nananalangin, Panginoon, na inyo po kaming uh, abutin, Panginoon sa panahon po na ito at kami ay inyo pong kahabagan. Salamat po aming Diyos and I pray Panginoon uh, for our members in Deeper Life Community Church, Panginoon, na ang inyo pong pag-iingat 
ang inyo pong pagliligtas, Panginoon, sa anumang sakit at karamdaman sa panahon po na to, sila po ay inyo pong mapangalagaan, aming Panginoon. Salamat po, aming Ama, and we are praying, Panginoon, that our ministry, Panginoon, may continue whatever happen, Panginoon, sa situation po, sa mga susunod po na araw, Panginoon, because uh, this week, Panginoon, is again, Uh, renewed, tightened implementation of, 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 of uh, the protocols, Panginoon, uh, for COVID, aming Diyos. Kaya kami po ay uh, labis lamang po na umaasa ng inyo pong patuloy po na pag-abot ay mararanasan po ng bawat isa aming Panginoon. Hallelujah. Salamat po, Panginoon. And we pray as well, Panginoon, for the word that we will share together today, Panginoon. Bless this word, O God, and uh, may the power of your word, O God, uh, emanate to us and change our heart, Panginoon. Change our heart, O God. And please, Lord, allow us once again to refresh our spiritual life aming Panginoon at kami po ay inyo pong patuloy po na mapunuan sa spiritual po naming mga pangailangan. I am praying Panginoon that your word so God may be may, may become a power that will move us as we hear and listen to it. Salamat po aming Panginoon. This is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Purihin po ang Panginoon. Tayo po ay magpapatuloy sa atin pong pag-aaral at pakinig ng salita po ng Diyos. For the meantime, we will stop in our series in the book of Colossians for the benefit of everyone. I am sharing today um, from the books of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 up to 20. And uh, this study... is entitled, Standing Firm. So, be with me, mga kapatid, in your Bible, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, and verse 20. So, yes, we are looking at the book of Ephesians in chapter 6. And we are very familiar in this chapter because uh, most of the time, we look at the portion in verse 10 up to verse 20 about the whole armor of God. I'm sure that this is not the first time na pinag-aralan po natin to. And today, I just want to uh, look at again the blessings of the Lord that we have From, from His Word in this portion of the Scripture. But it's important, mga kapatid, to understand that uh, the armor of God was prescribed by Paul here in Ephesians chapter 6 not for the purpose of winning. So maybe some of us are thinking that the armor of God is a tool or instrument For winning. So we must be corrected because this armor of God is not for the purpose of winning but for the Christians or the believers to be able to stand firm or defend the territory of Christ and His church who have been uh, conquered by Jesus Christ. on the cross. So, hindi po for winning ang armor of God, kundi ito po ay uh, instrument upang ang mga mananampalataya ay maging matatag, makatayo ng matibay at maipagtanggol nila yung mga napanaluna na o na-conquer na ng ating Panginoong Sukristo para po sa kanya pong mga anak. So, this is not for the purpose of winning, but to stand firm against the enemy's attack. In verse 11, that is our key verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, please take note of that in your Bible. It says here, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able 
to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. So that's the key verse. That's why we know that this full armor of God is not for winning, but it is for a believer to stand firm, to be able to stand firm against the scheme of the devil. So if we are Christians, if we are believers, it's interesting for us, it should be interesting for us to look at the details of every pieces of this armor. What are the use of this armor na meron, pong, na meron po ang Diyos para po sa kanya pong mga anak. So, um, today, mga kapatid, I would like to start in this perspective that being a Christian, we need to know or we need to understand that every day we are into battle. Nasa pakikibaka tayo every day, every moment of, la of our lives are into battle. Simula po nung tayo po ay maging anak po ng Diyos, upon the time of our salvation, we are already placed in a battle against our enemy, and that is Satan and his evil works. And just like what uh, this movie uh, is saying, that we should remember who the real enemy is. Tama po ba? <laughs> So, sino po ba ang tunay po nating kaaway? Ngayon po, ang lahat po ng mga tao, karamihan, maaring ang iba ay hindi, pero ang karamihan, most of the people, are looking at COVID-19 as an enemy. So, COVID-19 is a virus and it brings pandemic globally. So, Maybe most of the people in the globe is thinking that uh, this COVID-19 is our enemy, is the enemy of our lives. But in Ephesians chapter 6, mga kapatid, uh, Paul specifically described who are our real enemy. Sinabi po dito ni Pablo, sino po ba talaga ang tunay po nating kaaway? And to make it short, if we are looking at COVID as an enemy, I would like to say that COVID is just like, is a sickness just like cancer, which is fatal. Mas nakamamatay po ang cancer uh, kesa po sa, sa COVID. Di po ba? And uh, cancer is just a sickness in our perspective. It's not an enemy in our mind. But COVID-19, maybe we're thinking that this is our enemy. If we look at COVID, ano po ba talaga ang, ang, ang kaaway natin sa context po ng, ng COVID? Ang tunay po nating kaaway sa context po ng COVID is our fear. Yung atin pong pagkatakot. Because COVID brings death and therefore we fear. But for Christians, according to Paul, death is the time of his victory. Ang kamatayan para kay Pablo ay pagtatagumpay. Ang sabi niya, ang mabuhay ay kay Kristo, ngunit ang mamatay ay tagumpay. So in the mind of a believer, death is not fearsome. Hindi po nakakatakot. Pero bakit po tayo na babahala sa mga panahon po na to? Nang dahil po sa COVID. You know why? Because there is, because COVID brings fear to us. And the original source of fear is Satan. That is the enemy of faith. Ang kalaban po ng pananampalataya ay, faith, ay, ay, ay fear. And that is my point for bringing this full armor of God once again in our lesson. Okay. So, what does our enemy bring to us? Fear. Just like the fear of COVID. So, in our text, please be with me. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 up to 20, it says, Finally, 
Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the whole forces of this darkness, the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, which with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. With every prayer and request, pray at all times in the Spirit and with this in view, be alert with all perseverance and every request for all the saints and pray in my behalf that speech may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So, mga kapatid, yan po ang nilalaman po ng atin pong pag-aaral sa araw po na to. I have three points dito po sa atin pong pag-aaral. First is putting on the full armor in verse 10 up to 30. In verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. So it says that believer has to be strong in the Lord. In New International Version, it says like this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. So first, to be made or to be done. So nasa punto na po, ang sinasabi po doon ni Paul, tayo po ay nasa point na na ang atin pong kalagayan ay kailangan po nating magpakatatag sa Panginoon. So our situation now, according to Paul, is finally at the point of becoming in the Lord. In chapter, in, in the previous chapter, from chapter 1 up to chapter 4, Paul uh, discussed how we were saved. Kung paano po tayo naligtas. And nakita po natin doon that every believer was predestined by God for salvation. And today, mga kapatid, we are a Christian. So, the, 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 the next chapter after chapter 3, which is chapter 4, is are already at chapters that concludes our situations, that concludes what should be our life. Ano yung dapat na buhay natin? Ano yung dapat na perspective natin? Ano dapat ang natin sa mga bagay-bagay? Katulad po, sabi sa chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, so Paul is a prisoner of the Lord, as a believer, sa chapter 4, verse 17, sabi niya, so this, I say, so every a concluding remarks, chapter 5, verse 1, sabi niya, therefore, be imitators of God, because we have been now a Christian. In verse 7, therefore, do not be partakers. In chapter 5, verse 15, therefore, be careful how you walk. And here in chapter 6, verse 10, finally, be strong in the Lord. So the believers here, um, the verse 10 here says that the believers should be strong in the Lord or the believers can be strengthened. Strengthened 
not only by the Lord, but also by His resources. So we can be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His mighty. We can find the Lord. If, so that's the point. We can find or we experience the Lord's power that and this power and this power from Christ God's strength katulad po ng um, ginawa po ng Diyos sa Panginoong Sukristo nung siya po ay kanya pong buhayin yun po ang kapangyarihan na kumikilos po sa isang mana ng palataya so we can be strengthened by that power of God that can overcome death tulad ng ginawa po ng o, ng Diyos sa so, Kristo nang siya ay po ay kanyang buhayin. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 and this is how the power of God is described in the life of Jesus Christ. It says here, and His incomparably great power for us who believe, that power is the same as the mighty strength He exerted when He raised Christ from the dead him his right hand in the heavenly realms so the incomparable great power for us who are believers are the same power that works in our lives it's the same power that raised jesus christ from death amen That's what we can find from the Lord. That's the power that can strengthen us with Jesus Christ in Jesus Christ. The second one is we can be strengthened, we can be strong in the Lord by His resources. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, sabi nga ni Paul, I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. Jesus Christ is the source of our strength. He is the giver of our life and the source of our strength. And Paul is telling us to subscribe from Jesus Christ, to subscribe strength from the Lord. That is what he's trying to say by saying, be strong in the Lord. So, the second point in verse 11, B, says that Put on the full armor of God so that we will be able to stand firm against the scheme of the devil. So, the second point that we can see here is Paul is advising or instructing the believers to put on God's armor. So, we can, we can be strong in the Lord uh, through His power and by His resources, we can be strengthened. But there is more. There is more. There is more, which is the God's armor that we need to put on on our lives. And to put on means we as believers should be responsible for putting on this full armor. Hello. Amen. Uh, we are responsible as believers to put it on, to put on the full armor of God. It's God's armor. It's not our armor. We are responsible to put it on. And the armor are weapons we can put on all together. Greek, 
So, hapla means, hapla urgency. And this we weapon is a weapon of righteousness that we need to put on with urgency. That's the, that's the tone of this, of this verse. To put on the weapon of righteousness with urgency. So that's uh, Paul is trying to say this verse. The full armor is a weapon of righteousness according to Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7. It says, In the word of truth and in the power of God, by the weapon of righteousness for the right hand and left. So, the purpose again, why Paul is instructing the believers to put on God's armor is for us to stand against the devil's scheme. In verse 11 to 13, we can read again, Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Struggle is not against flesh in blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of his darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heaven places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist done everything to stand firm. So, we are putting on the armor of God for us to stand against atin po ng kaaway ay ang baluti po ng mga purpose again is for us to be able to stand against the scheme of the devil. We are already victors. Nung tayo po, nung mamatay po ang Panginoong Sukristo sa krus, through His death, and by putting, by, by, by putting on of our faith in Jesus Christ's work, we are victorious. We have inheritance in heaven. We were saved. So that's our position. And it's not anymore for us to to have a stand an offensive stand against the devil because our position now is a position of defense so the armor of god is for christian defense not to attack satan or advance against him believers are only to stand or hold on our territory which Christ has already conquered to defend our territory, to defend the church, to defend our position in Christ. When we say to defend, it means we are defending what everything that we already have in Jesus Christ. And number one of this are the blessings. The blessings that we have as a believer. So we take on against the devil's strategy so that we can defend the blessings that we have in Jesus Christ. So at the end of the day, mga kapatid, kinakailangan po nating tingnan. We need, we need to look at are we, how are we putting on the armor of God in our lives? Paul says here that believer should be responsible in taking on the armor of God. Because without God's armor, believers will be defeated by the schemes of the devil which have been effective for thousand years years. Defeated means we are being robbed by our joy of salvation. Defeated means we are being uh, uh, robbed of our blessings in Jesus Christ. And 
being defeated means we are not becoming productive as a believer, as a Christian. So, we need to understand that this purpose is especially made by God for us. This purpose is especially made by God for us because this armor is God's armor with a purpose to stand against the scheme of the devil if we will put it on. And again, mga kapatid, let's look at verse 12. Sabi dito, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Yes, sabi ko nga po sa inyo, pag tinignan po natin ang atin pong kaaway, hindi po talagang physical o, o flesh and blood yung atin pong kaaway according to verse 12. Kaaway po natin ay isa pong spiritual uh, mafia. Ang tawag po ng isang commentator po dito, spiritual mafia. A group of, ang mafia, isang syndicate, di ba? Uh, isang, isang sindikato na makapangyarihan, mga leaders, o binubuo siya ng isang grupo na ang kanilang ginagawa ay uh, manamantala, mang, mag -ter mang terror, so to, to, to make terrors and um, to make evil things to the people. So, at the back of that, uh, is our fight against spiritual being. So, the real fight that we have, the real battle that we have is spiritual battle or spiritual conflict against the work of the devils in our lives. And there's a lot of scheme. Marami pong mga scheme na ginagawa po ang kaaway. They can use anybody. They can use the situation. Katulad po ng uh, maraming kaguluhan ngayon sa ibang bansa. They can use sickness. They can use this virus. They can use everything that is available in this world. They can use uh, material blessing upang tayo po ay dayain. Di po ba? So marami pong paraan ang Diyos, ang, ang, ang kaaway, amen, ang, ang kaaway rather, uh, to bring uh, struggles in, in the believer's life. And as a believer, again, what we are protecting are the blessings, the spiritual blessings that we have already in Jesus Christ. Yes, we have spiritual blessings. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the Lord and God, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly place in Christ. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. So, Christians have, have, have enough blessings from the Lord. Even bad situations are blessings to a Christian because it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that all things work together for good. For those who love God, for those who are believers, and they are called according to His purpose. In James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above. Yes, we have good and perfect gift from our God, coming down from the Father of the heavenly light, who does not change like shifting arrow. We have good and perfect gift from our God that comes down from heaven. And His, His blessings are not changing. He, 
And, and this God, who have the perfect gift, does not change on His promises. Hindi po siya nagbabago sa kanya pong mga pangako. So, makikita po natin, mga kapatid, na ang atin pong Diyos, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, we have spiritual blessing. So, makikita po natin that God in His providence, sa divine providence po na meron po tayo sa atin pong Diyos, God has already given believers total blessing. It says spiritual blessing in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Spiritual here does not mean immaterial blessing because the opposite is ma of material is spiritual. But this spiritual does not pertain to immaterial to immaterial blessing and it because it pertains to the work of God the spiritual blessings here from God it pertains to ginagawa po niya sa atin na mga mananampalataya like for example in the case of Romans chapter 8 verse 28 all things work together for good. So, what does it mean? Even bad situations, even, even trials, even sickness, God used it to bless us because it says that all things work together for? For what? For good. For good means for the benefit of those who love God of the believers. And it is complete. It is complete. In Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it's, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. That's in a New International Version. So, everything pertaining to life, Christians are eternally, Christians are have His divine provision sa lahat po ng mga mana ng palat. So, it's not just uh, eternal security. Hindi lamang po yung eternal security ang, ang blessing po sa atin po ng atin pong Panginoon. Eternal security means our salvation that cannot be out by, by anybody or ang na hindi nawawala. Salvation that is Secured forever. It's not the only thing that we have pertaining to life. When we say everything we need for life in Godly, it includes ours so that we can we can walk in our Christian life. So Kung tayo po ay nakaranas po ng kahirapan, poverty is not a constraint for Christians to continue walking in their Christian life because there has a divine power that works in every believer's life for them to persevere and grow. And of course, the sustenance includes material provision sa atin pong buhay. When we say everything we need for life, pati po yung atin pong mga kinakain, hindi po tayo pagkukulangin ng atin pong Panginoon. So, and all things, a godly life. So God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. So in verse 13, we can see again the word for. So since we are 
since we have that uh, since we have that truth meron po tayong uh, pangako mula po sa ating Panginoon since we are uh, standing secured sa atin pong buhay bilang isang manang palataya what is our position now our position now is to walk victoriously upang ang ang position na po natin ngayon ay maglakad victoriously because Jesus Christ has already uh, conquered our enemy on the cross so tayo mga mananampalataya is now living victoriously and that's the reason why Paul in verse 13 is saying therefore take up the full armor of God so that is for the reason that yung yung enemy po will not be able to to um to tempt us or to make things that will rub out our joy of salvation. Sa pamamagitan po ng full armor of God, yung mga scheme po ng devil will not be any more effective to us. Kaya na natin siyang sawayin. Kaya natin siyang uh, mapagtagumpayan. Or kaya natin siyang, uh, o wala na yung magagawa sa atin. Hindi tayo magtatagumpay dahil mananagumpay na po tayo. Ang, ang right term ay wala na pong magagawa sa atin yung mga scheme na pandaraya po ng kaaway. Kaya huwag po tayong madaya sa mga panahon po na to. If we fear, if we have fear, huwag po tayong, huwag po tayong madaya ng pagkatakot at pagkabalisa na meron po tayo. So what we need to do according to verse 13 is As a Christian, we need to take up the full armor of God so that we will be able to resist in the, in the, the evils in our day or in the evil day. In the evil day, it's futuristic. Di po ba? It, 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 it connotes that the days in the future will become more and more evil katulad po ng sinabi po ni ni Paul kay Timothy that in the last days people will be lovers of themselves will not anymore listen to the sound doctrines and they will just listen to what to what is good on their ears at maaring uh, iba't iba pong mga pagsubok o kahirapan ang mararanasan po ng mga tao So for us kung tayo po ay nakakaranas ng ganon, ganong ganong pagkabalisa, ganong pandaraya, ganong pagkatakot, mga kapatid, please be reminded that it's our responsibility to put on this armor so that we can be able to resist the evil of our days and for us to stand firm, to stand in defense. Amen? Second, standing with the armor. So we have now the armor. We have put on the armor. So Christians now should be standing firm. Tayong mga naman ng palataya, if we have put on the armor, we should now be standing firm. Of course, with the armor. So let's look at the mandate. The mandate is to stand. Stand firm, therefore. Stand firm, therefore. And this therefore connotes urgency. This mandate denotes urgency. And, and this mandate um, requires us to be armed. To arm ourselves with first belt of truth in 40. So the truth refers to a believer's integrity and faithful. Mga kap tayo po bilang Kristiano, one of our best weapon in life is our integrity. If we broke our integrity, people knows that we are a Christian. And because of temptations, because of some personal uh, interests, 
if ever we broke our integrity as a believer, then that's very bad for us. Because what we should what we should have is the belt of truth, which is the integrity. Maghirap na po tayo, katulad ng prinsipyo ng tanay ko, magsabi niya sa akin noon, it's uh, prinsipyo po ng, ng tatay ko, hindi pa po, hindi pa po siya mahanan ng palataya, but he have this principle na lagi po niyang sinasabi sa akin na maghirap na tayo, pero huwag nating sisirain ang pangalan natin. Maghirap na tayo, huwag lang masira ang pangalan natin. So, that's integrity. So mga kapatid, belt of truth na dapat po nating isinusuot is our integrity. Ang armor of God po ay isa pong illustration po ni Paul na kinuha po niya sa isang sundalong Romano na kung saan ang Roman soldier po na to have this uh, armor of God. He can stand firm in the battle. Hindi siya basta-basta mapapatay. And the equivalent of belt of truth na inilalagay po ng sundalo sa kanya pong bewang ay ang integrity po nating mga Kristiyano. It is not the truth about the gospel, but it is the believer's integrity and faithfulness. So, Ang katapatan po natin sa atin pong mga kapwa-tao ay napaka-importante. Ang atin pong salita ay integridad at honor na dapat po nating pinangangalagaan. At tingnan po ninyo to. If we have the integrity and faithfulness to the people, the soldier's belt of truth or belt gave him a freedom to move easily. So, ganun din po sa atin. Kung tayo po ay mananampalataya, sira ang pangalan natin, hindi tayo mapagkakatiwalaan, hinahunting po tayo ng mga, ng mga pinagkaatrasuhan po natin, ang kilos po natin ay itado. So, hindi po tayo makakagalaw ng malaya. So, that's very bad for a Christians. for Christians. The second one is having put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness refers to the sanctifying righteousness of Christ. It doesn't refer, itong righteousness po na to, it doesn't refer to our Imputed righteousness na tinanggap po natin sa Panginoon. We have already that imputed righteousness. The righteousness that Paul is pertaining here as the best plate of, best, best, best plate of righteousness is our sanctifying righteousness. Me, meaning it's the sanctifying righteousness of Christ that should be in practice of the believer's life, in the believer's life. Ito po yung ginagawa na po natin sa atin pong buhay. ba? Diba? We are, after our positional sanctification, we were justified and positionally sanctified. After that, we are now progressively sanctified. Matapos po tayong maligtas, ay lumalakad na po tayo sa isa pong buhay ng sanctification. Progressive sanctification is what we call our life. We are into a progressive sanctification. And that is the righteousness. That is the breastplate of righteousness. The sanctification that we should practice in our life today. Ano po ang uh, kahalagahan? What's the importance of having this Uh, righteousness being practiced in our life. Just like the Roman soldiers having his breastplate protected his chest, 
So, ang isa pong sundalo na mayroon pong breast, breastplate ay protektado po ang kanya pong chest, ang kanya pong dibdib, laban po sa atake po ng kaaway against the enemy's attack, attacks. So, that is our guard. Yung, sanctif yung, yung righteous, sanctifying, sanctifying righteousness po na yan is our guard. The guard of our heart against the assault of the devil. Last Sunday, I gave you an example how I, 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 how I manage resisting temptations in my workplace. When I was in sales department, marami pong mga temptations. There are temptations from my office mates, yaya dito, yaya doon. So, so how I was able to protect my, my Christian life, myself? First is, I declared that I am a Christian. So, so every time that they um, invite me, every time they invite me to, to a nightlife, uh, inuman, or kung ano pang mga kalokohan, alam naman sa nightlife, so it always come to my mind that they know that I am a Christian. So my testimony is working for me because it guards my heart from sinning. It guards my heart from sinning. The second thing I did was to start leading a prayer. Every time there's a meeting, I lead a prayer. So they see my integrity. They were able to see my integrity as a Christian because I opened my life to them that I am a true Christian. So that's how I was protected by my testimonies. In verse 13, it says, And do not go on presenting the parts. Okay. Uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 13 says, And do not go on presenting the parts of your body to sin as instrument of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead and your body's part as instruments of righteousness for God. Yes. Yan po ang sabi po ni Paul sa Romans chapter uh, sa Romans chapter 6 verse 13 na huwag nating ihain yung bahagi ng ating katawan sa kasalanan because that can be used that can be an instrument of unrighteousness so we ne we, we we need to protect our selves our body the parts of our body against sin. We need to present ourselves to God as those who are alive from the death. So in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the acceptable worship for God is our body being presented clean of sin bilang isang malinis sa kasalanan na handog mula sa isang kamatayan na nakatanggap ng buhay. So, that's how important, mga kapatid, that as a Christian, we walk as a Christian. Let people see our Christian life. Let the light of Jesus Christ be evident to our lives because that is our breastplate of righteousness, it protects our heart from deceptions. Verse 15 says, And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel, so tandaw po natin ang ating mga paa ng ibanghelyo ng kapayapaan. So the gospel of peace, doesn't refer to a gospel salvation. 
refers to a believer's stability from the gospel. So, ibig sabihin, if we shed our feet with the preparation of the gospel, it means a believer is becoming stable from the gospel. So, paano po tayo nagiging stable? Sa Ibanghelyo. So, we are standing on the truth of the gospel. So, tinatayuan po natin yung katotohanan po ng Ibanghelyo. We stand on it. Tinatayuan po natin. At ito po ay nagbibigay po sa atin ng kapayapaan. Sapagkat ang Ibanghelyo po ay Ibanghelyo po ng kapayapaan. So, it doesn't pertains to our work of evangelism through the gospel, but the gospel of peace here, na sinusot po ng isa pong Roman soldier, as, 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 uh, uh, bilang, bilang kanya pong footwear, uh, pangyapak po na kasuutan, ay ang kanya pong stability, yung kanya pong pagiging uh, stable, o sa pa kanya pong pagiging matatag sa pagtayo sa itinuturo po ng Ibanghelyo ng Diyos. At para po sa isa pong sundalo, nakatulad po ng isa pong Roman soldiers, yan po ay nagbibigay po sa kanya ng uh, kapayapaan. Nag-aalis po ng kanya pong takot sa gitna po ng labanan. In verse 16, it says, in addition to all. So, meaning, lahat po ng mga nabanggit, simula po doon sa unang-una pong um, uh, verse, ang belt of truth, at ang breastplate of righteousness, at ang gospel of peace, meron pong karagdagan. Ang sabi po dito, in addition to all, meaning, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and the gospel of peace is incomplete without the shield of faith. In addition to all, take up the shield of faith which you will be able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the believer. Ano po yung shield of faith? Ang shield of faith refers to unwavering faith. Ito po yung pananampalataya po na matibay, matatag, hindi po katulad po sa isip ng tao na pabago-bago. It's not like the mind of people who keeps on changing. The shield of faith here refers to a stable and unwavering faith. And That, and that that stable and unwavering faith, isang matibay at matatag po na pananampalataya, yan po ay defense. Defense po ng isa pong mananampalataya. Katulad po ng isa pong sundalo, ang shield ay defense po niya sa mga arrows na bahala ng kanya pong kaaway. Ganon din po ang atin pong pakikibaka sa atin pong buhay bilang sa pong mananampalataya. The enemy is also throwing us flaming arrows according to verse 16. And this shield of faith extinguish. So pinapatay po ito mga flaming arrows because just like the Roman soldiers shield, yung mga shield po ng mga Romans are at Makakapal po na leather, thick leather, na it's soaked to an oil. So that if the flaming arrow will hit that shield, it will extinguish the flame. So kailangan po natin ng defense para po sa mga flaming arrows at atake po sa atin ng atin pong mga kaaway. Mga kapatid, ano po ang experience po natin sa panahon po na to? What do you think are the flaming arrows today in your lives? What are the enemies flaming, flaming arrows that is being thrown out to you today? 
Again, our stand is not to offense, but to stand firm in defense. Stand firm in defense with this armor of God, with a shield of faith that can extinguish the flaming arrows of the devil. It protect us. So, pinoprotectionan po tayo niyan against temptation. Against temptation of sins. Against lies of the devil. Marami pong pandaraya at kasinungalingan po ang kaaway. So, hawakan po natin ang, ang atin pong pananampalataya. Hawakan po natin ang mga pangako po ng Diyos. Let's hold on to the promise of God rather than to the promise of the people. Hawakan po natin ang, ang hope, ang pag-asa ng pangako na ibinigay po sa atin ng atin pong Diyos. Let's continue trusting our God. Kung kayo po ay nakakaranas po ngayon ng uncertainty, you know, you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Uh, for example, if you are into, if you are a COVID patient, marami pong mga uh, COVID, marami pong mga tao, they have fear of COVID because of what it brings to them, because of the fear of death. But mga kapatid, if we will shield, uh, if we will, if we have the shield of faith, if we have trust in God, kung patuloy po tayo, magtitiwala lamang po tayo sa Panginoon, this fear against COVID can be extinguished by this unwavering faith. Hawakan po natin ang pangako po ng atin pong Panginoon that in every day, ang Diyos ay kasama po natin. He never changed. Hindi po siya nagbabago. If we are sick, na, kung nahit po tayo ng COVID, let's pray to the Lord. Marami pong mga nagkasakit po ng COVID na nalangin po sa Panginoon and they get healed because God have His own purpose. Why everything is happening to us? Romans chapter 8, verse 28. I-memorize po natin yan. All things work together for good. Kung magkasakit po tayo, let it be. Let's trust God that He has His better purpose Hindi po natin alam. Mga kapatid, meron pong isang uh, kaibigan na nagtanong po sa akin na siya po ay nawala na po ng pag-asa sa kanya pong career. Hindi na po niya alam kung ano nangyayari po sa kanya because despite of uh, yung kanya pong magandang credentials, maganda pong academic records, magandang experience po sa trabaho pero nung nawalan po ng trabaho dahil nagkaroon po ng pandemya wala po siyang ma-applyan wala pong tumatanggap po sa kanya na mga kumpanya sa mga panahon po na to and he is now losing his uh, his uh, confidence nawala na po yung confidence po niya sa kanya pong sarili the best way to look at life today, mga kapatid, is to look at through the eyes of our faith. Tingnan po natin ang atin pong buhay, ang mga kaganapan sa pamamagitan po ng mata ng atin pong mga pananampalataya. Let's look at the promises of God. He will never forsake us, nor He will never leave us, nor forsake us. Ang isa po sa mga pangako ng Diyos sa Kanya pong mga anak. The last the last point that I have here in verse 17 to 20 says, receiving the final piece of the armor. Naisuot na po natin. Ano na po yung mga naisuot po natin? Belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, a gospel of peace, and in addition, yung breastplate, yung, yung shield of faith. So, but in verse 17 to 20, sabi doon, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. So there's two more final piece na idinagdag po dito sa verse 17. And the mandate is to take it, to receive it. 
So, to receive it. So, the helmet of salvation is not the salvation that we are receiving because in truth, we're not receiving salvation. God is working it on us. God is giving it to us as a free gift. So, we're not, we're not making our effort to, to receive it. So, it's not pertaining to our spiritual salvation. The helmet of salvation represents, uh, refers to our safety from devil's attack. Or it may be a safety for the future attack of the devil. So, that's why we need to take it on the helmet of salvation. The second one is the sword of the Spirit. It refers to the Word of God. Dahil sabi dito, which is the Word of God. And this is the only thing that we can see dito po sa armor of God that is being used for offense. The sword. That is the only thing that a Roman soldier have as an offensive weapon. Everything in the armor is for defense upang maging defensa po niya. And in verse 18, it says here, with every prayer and request, pray at all times in the spirit and with this in view, be alert with all perseverance in every request for all the saints. So verse 18 tells us about the method of caring. So the method of caring. As a Christian, kung tayo po ay nakasuot po ng uh, armor of God, so tayo po ay ready for defense, uh, we are standing firm, and we have the, 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 the sword of the Spirit. So it's the Spirit sword, which is the word of God. So, ano po ang gagawin po natin ngayon? So, tayo po ay isa na pong mandirigma. We are now a soldier in full armor. What we should do now? Inside the armor, we should be a caring soldier of God. Sa loob po ng baluti ay dapat po ay caring soldier of God po tayo. We are a praying soldier of God. Kaya ang sabi dito, with every prayer and request, pray at all times in the Spirit. What kind of prayer? A prayer with perseverance and every request, for, for every request of all the saints. A, prayer, a, a praying soldier and an alert soldier is just right for a soldiers of Christ. So praying connotes a caring soldier. We are praying not just for ourselves, but we, we pray for all the saints, ang sabi dito. And perseverance connotes intensity. Intensity in prayer. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang po tayo occasional nananalangin, kundi tayo po ay patuloy po nananalangin. So, when the enemy attacks, kapag inataki po tayo ng atin pong kaaway, it can be on all occasions. Wala pong pipiliin po na occasion ang, ang atake po ng kaaway. So, therefore, in all occasions, in every situation, at all times, we should be a praying soldier of Christ. As a soldier, soldier is normally alert. So we are praying and we are alert and we are persevering. Hindi po tayo natutulog. We are persevering. We continue it in a constant manner at all times. Amen? At all times. We are praying for what? We are praying for every request of all the saints. Ilang beses po kayo nakikibalikat sa atin pong sama-sama ng gabi po ng panalangin.
Sa atin pong sama-sama ng gabi ng panalangin ay hindi po natin kinakalimutan na ipanalangin po natin ang mga prayer request po ng atin po mga kapatiran, ang mga kapatid po natin who are elderly, they, even they are not speaking to us, we should know that they need our prayers, mga kapatid. Kailangan po nila ng atin pong mga panalangin. And in verse 19, ang sabi doon, And pray in my behalf that speech may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So to pray for all the saints in verse 18. In verse 19, to pray for the ministers and the ministry effectivity. So, ang kailangan po dito ni Paul is for him to be bold and to be effective. So, kailangan po niya nang nag intercede po sa kanya upang sa kanya pong pangangaral, sa pagbuka ng kanyang bibig, ay maging effective po yung kanya pong pangangaral. Because, ano po yung kanya pong ipinapangaral? Ang kanya pong ipinapangaral ay mystery of the gospel. From the word mystery, may isip na po natin na hindi po yan madaling ipaliwanag. So, imaginein po ninyo si Paul ay nangangaral po sa mga early Christians, sa early church na ang karamihan po ay mga Jews, mga Hudyo, na ang kanilang pagkaunawa ay patungkol po sa, sa uh, pagliligtas po ng Panginoon ay iba. Sapagkat ang mga Hudyo po ay tinuruan po ng Diyos ng isa pong, ng isa pong covenant ng isa pong pangako ay binigyan po sila ng Diyos. At yun po ang kanila pong pag-asa, yun po ang kanila pong kaligtasan. Ngunit sa panahon po na ito, itong mga Hudyo po na to ay tumanggap po ng, ng grace ng atin pong Panginoong Sukristo, ng, ng pagligtas ng atin pong Panginoong Sukristo. Sa panahon po na to ang kaligtasan ay sa pamamagitan po ng grace ng Panginoong Sukristo. That's why it's now a mystery of the gospel na hindi po nauunawaan po ng mga hudyo. And that is difficult for Paul. Kaya ang kailangan po niya ay panalangin na magbibigay po ng boldness at ng uh, kapangyarihan upang maunawaan ang kanyang ibanghelyo ng, pagli- ng ang ibanghelyo ng kaligtasan. Sa atin po, mga kapatid, sa atin pong ministeryo, sino po ang nananalangin sa inyo para sa atin pong ministeryo? Nakontento na po ba tayo na nakikinig na lang ng mga panalangin ng iba? Amen? Hinihingi po sa atin na tayo po ay manalangin para po sa atin pong mga mangaral at sa atin pong ministeryo. At ang sabi nga ni John Bunyan, the last piece of armor every Christian to wear is the weapon of all prayer. So ang bawat isa po sa atin ay manalangin para sa isa't isa at para po sa atin pong ministeryo. In summary, we put on the armor not for the purpose of winning but to stand firm. Today mga kapatid, ang, stand, ang standing position po natin is defense against fear. Meron pong global fear dahil po sa COVID, tumayo po tayo with the full armor of God. Nang meron pong assurance of security, meron pong defense, may, meron, po, meron po tayong armor that can be able for us to defend the joy of our salvation, to defend our blessings from being rubbed out by enemy. Because that's what we have won through Jesus Christ. 
Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we are thankful today because your word is bringing encouragement to every one of us. And I just pray, Panginoon, sa akin po mga kapatiran, sa pagkakataon po na to, na kami po, O Diyos, ay patuloy po na tumingin aming Panginoon sa inyo pong mga salita aming Panginoon, sa inyo pong instructions aming Diyos, na kami aming Ama ay uh, tumayo ng matibay to stand firm with the full armor of God, with the belt of truth aming Panginoon, na kami ay tumatayo, Panginoon, sa uh, Ibanghelyo ng kapayapaan aming Diyos, na, amin, na ito po ay amin pong natatanggap sa pamamagitan po ng pakikinig at pangaral ng inyo pong mga salita, sapagat ang inyo pong mga salita ay nangungusap po sa amin pong mga puso. Sa pamamagitan po, Panginoon, ng, uh, ng breastplate of righteousness, na ito po ay ang amin pong mga integridad, aming Panginoon. Tulungan po ninyo kami na tumayo ng matibay at matatag ng meron pong integridad, aming Panginoon, sa harapan po, O Diyos, ng 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 publiko ng mga tao aming Panginoon help us O God to be strengthened aming Panginoon by your power Panginoon the power O God that was displayed aming Panginoon through Jesus Christ aming Diyos nung siya po ay inyo pong buhayin mula po sa kamatayan and O God bless us Lord with the shield of faith Panginoon na ang amin pong pananampalataya, Panginoon, we can hold on, O God, on our faith that we can have a full trust, aming Panginoon, in Jesus Christ, in His power, in His provisions, Panginoon. Ganon din, O Diyos, sa Kanya pong pag-iingat at pagliligtas po sa amin, aming Diyos. Maglalagak po kami, Panginoon, ang amin pong mga panalangin sa araw-araw, aming Ama, para po sa amin pong mga kapatiran, Panginoon, sa panahon po na to. Ganon din, Panginoon, sa amin pong bansa. Ganon din, Panginoon, sa amin pong mga gawain. Panginoon, sa inyo pong mga lingkod, sa inyo pong ministeryo, aming Diyos, upang kami, Panginoon, ay hindi po madaya ng kaaway, aming Panginoon. Magamit po namin, Panginoon, ang inyo pong salita as our ultimate weapon, Panginoon, which is the sword of the Spirit, aming Diyos. Kami ay palagi pong nakikinig at nag-aaral po ng salita aming Panginoon. Panahon na upang ang amin po mga napakinggan aming Diyos ay maging sandata po namin for our offense, O God. Na hindi lamang po kami aming Diyos nakatayo ng matibay, kundi at the same time ay ginagamit naman po namin, Panginoon, ang, ang inyo pong mga salita upang sawayin aming Diyos ang gawa ng kaaway sa aming mga buhay. Katulad ng pagsaway ng aming Panginoong Sukristo kay Satanas na kanyang ginamit ang salita ng Diyos. Hayaan po ninyo aming Panginoon na itong mga natututunan at napapakinggan po namin Panginoon ay magamit po namin. Hindi lamang amin pong depensa kundi amin pong opensa upang masaway po namin ang kaaway. Maraming marami pong salamat Pagpalain po ninyo ang akin po mga kapatid at ang lahat po o Diyos ng mga nakikinig. Bless, O Lord, for all those who hear your words. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Purihin po ang Panginoon.